Hey, what's up? I am Ara, aka I Eat Zebra, and welcome back to the channel. Depending on when you're watching this, it is officially 2023, and the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes movie, the prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy, is coming out in November of this year. To say I'm excited for this film is an understatement. Especially looking at the cast for the film, I can tell it's going to be outstanding. If you haven't seen my casting news video, I'll link it below. Since that video came out, it was announced that the phenomenal Viola Davis has joined the cast as Dr. Gall and Peter Dinklage as Dean Highbottom. Knowing my timing, by the time this drops, more cast members will probably be announced. Anyways, to the topic at hand, for those that haven't read the book yet, you're going to be in for a major shock in the difference between the 10th Hunger Games and the 74th Hunger Games that we see in the original trilogy. I'm going to break down the differences in the games from the Reaping, Arrival to the Capital, the games themselves, and what happens after the games, which will lead us into who would win between our District 12 tributes, Lucy Gray Baird or Katniss Everdeen. Don't worry, this video will not contain specific spoilers. However, if you want to go in completely blind, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to focus primarily on setting the scene for the 10th Hunger Games, assuming most of you have read or watched the original series. The Hunger Games is not the same spectacle we see Katniss compete in. Granted, there are still kids competing to the death. However, during the 10th Hunger Games that Lucy Gray competes in, it is significantly harsher. The games take place after the six year long civil war in Pan Am that left District 13 to be obliterated, or so we thought, the capital victorious, and the remaining 12 districts beaten into submission. The capital, like everywhere else, was greatly impacted by the war, and despite it being about 11 years since the end of the war, its effects are still clearly evident. As a way to maintain peace by instilling fear, the Hunger Games are created. 24 tributes, one boy and one girl from each district are chosen in what is called a reaping. The 10th Hunger Games, like the 74th reaping ceremonies, are televised for all to see. Who can forget seeing the fabulous Effie Trinket in her catchphrase, may the odds be ever in your favor? I certainly can't. Well, back during the 10th Hunger Games, there wasn't an Effie to do the reaping. The reaping was done by the local officials, so in the case of District 12, it was the mayor who chose the tributes. We see during the reaping in the 74th Hunger Games that after Katniss volunteers in Prim's stead, she is given a few minutes with her family and then is escorted by Effie to a luxurious train to take her, Peta, their mentor Haymitch, who was a previous victor from the Hunger Games, and a glam team directly to the capital. The train is filled with food and drinks, comfortable beds, running hot water, and more for leading the lambs to a comforting slaughter. Well, for Lucy and her fellow tributes, that is not the case at all. She, along with 23 others, are packed into a train meant for transporting livestock. They are chained and bound. They're not provided with food or drinks. They're meant to sleep where they are chained up and treated like animals. Once Lucy and the other tributes arrive in the capital, they are not greeted by curious onlookers and reporters. Only one mentor arrives and it was of his own volition. Not because he was told to be there. They are then transported from the train to a truck in a cage where they are still chained up and then dumped into a monkey enclosure at the local capital zoo. Compare this to Katniss and Peta's arrival to the luxury penthouse apartment they got to stay in before the games. The difference is night and day. Being transported and living in your own filth, bound, not being fed or washed will definitely cause major health problems. And that is exactly what happened. The lack of safety for the tributes was non-existent. Thus, multiple tributes died before they ever entered the arena. To avoid too many spoilers on what health and safety concerns befell each tribute, I won't say exactly who and how they died, but only 14 of the original 24 tributes actually make it into the arena. From what we saw of the 74th Hunger Games, this would seem to get the audience in a bit of an uproar. 
But at the time of the 10th Hunger Games, the societal climate was different. The country was still recovering from a brutal civil war. Many people didn't own TVs, especially outside the capital. And if they did, the reception wasn't the best, so a lot of people did not tune in to watch the games. The capital citizens themselves were not that invested in the games because there wasn't anything in it for them. Well, that is until this very Hunger Games we are about to see. Audience participation in the sense of betting and sponsorships gets its start in the 10th Hunger Games as part of a new initiative by the Mentor Program. As I mentioned earlier, Katniss and Peeta's mentor, Haymitch, was a previous victor and was therefore responsible for mentoring tributes from District 12. During the 10th Hunger Games, they initially introduced the program, and instead of prior victors, the mentors are students from the prestigious Capital Academy. Having come from a world of privilege, but also having to endure the tribulations of the war, the student mentors overall did not care or respect their tributes. They saw them as the enemy, as lowly beings, and little better than just animals. Not all the mentors were like this, but a lot of them were, and only cared if their tribute would win just to get the scholarship being awarded to the winning mentor. Before even stepping into the arena, Lucy Gray and her fellow tributes are at the lowest point, and it seems like no one cares. Granted, by the time Katniss enters the arena, people's lack of regard for her and the other tributes' lives isn't the greatest, but is nowhere near as dehumanizing as Lucy Gray's. We see during the 74th Hunger Games, all the tributes get cool suits, a tracker placed in their arm, they enter a high-tech arena, and have the opportunity to make a mad dash to the cornucopia for some supplies. Well, during Lucy Gray's Battle Royale, it is nothing like that at all. As previously mentioned, only 14 of the 24 made it into the arena. They did not get any cool new gear. They did have an advantage of getting a tour of the arena before the games, but that's because it was an old amphitheater that was largely in disrepair after the war. There wasn't a giant cornucopia, so the usual bloodbath at the beginning of the games isn't the same. After each death in the 74th Hunger Games, a loud cannon would go off, the body would be airlifted out of the arena, and at the end of each night, there would be a projection in the sky with the fallen tributes. Well, none of that exists during the 10th Hunger Games. Once a tribute dies, their body is left wherever it falls in the arena. There weren't formal announcements that someone died and who died at that. So if you're in a really good hiding spot in the arena, you'll have no clue as to what is going on outside. For viewers, it wasn't much better as there were less cameras and microphones to catch what the tributes were doing at all times, which can be tough if you're a mentor trying to help your tribute survive to win the games. Haymitch tells Katniss and Peeta, that the sponsor program can mean life or death at times in the arena. And this holds true during the 10th Hunger Games as well. In the case for Lucy Gray and her tributes, the program was just initiated. And with any new system, there are plenty of kinks to work out, which we will see during the games. The new system, even with its faults, greatly impacts the tributes in the games, both for good and bad. Well, let's say through all of this, you survive to be the final tribute if you're like Katniss, you get a new house in Victor's Village, more money than you have ever had, fame, and unfortunately, get stuck being a mentor to a new batch of tributes every year. Well, that was supposed to be the case for Katniss, but you get the point. For the winner of the 10th Hunger Games, you get sent back home with your life, and that's it. No new home, no money, just trauma and a heaping pile of PTSD. The Hunger Games within itself is an awful spectacle, and it begs the question, which is worse? To have all the pomp and glamour to be thrown into a pit to fight for your life, or be treated like an animal beforehand and still have to be thrown into a pit for fight for your life? Which leads me to the question I posed at the beginning. Who would win in the same Hunger Games competition? Lucy Gray or Katniss? In my opinion, it's, it's a tough choice. I believe Katniss would fare well in the 10th Hunger Games based on her skills. However, I think Lucy Gray could win in the 74th Games based on her wit and charisma. With that being said, I guess my answer is Lucy Gray Baird. What do you think? Do you think Katniss would pull out on top? 
let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. While you're subscribing, hit the notification bell to be alerted for future content on this channel. See you next time. Bye.